noise. I'm calling people. Muli wa come. We need to make some noise. I'm too lonely. I hate being alone, really. I don't like it. My name is Tumusime Catherine. Stage name Kapakat. Ready, Johnny. <laughs> Journalist. <laughs> Religion can so can you was echo. Uh, same issue about the status. Status, I have partners. I have people that care about me. Those people that like me. Yeah. That's what it is. Ah, oh, indeed. Then, uh, the religion, why is it hard for you to. I don't know. These people make us make it hard for us to believe in religions. They make it hard. Mine is a complete proof of take my belief in something. Because it takes a lot. What is I'm going to be in your solo while for it. So I want to be sure. Tingenda wa yo blambu wange, mutima ga wange, moyo go wange, nti nsobo lo kwe sigama chine chintu nga checho. So I want to be sure. And the people I think that are leading are not making it look sure for me. Uh, but before, like, when you were young, which you were reading, right? When I was young, they told us to pray. To whom, where, how, I didn't know. But we prayed nevertheless. Yes. Uh, where is uh, Kapakata uh, born and raised? Well, Nazali wa 40. Nibande te Kampala. Oh, sorry. I was born in Fort Potro, and uh, we later left and came to Kampala. I think I was two or three. So all the rest of my life has been around Kampala. That is Tulaka Wempe. I've been on Bombo Road most of my time growing up. Rent here, then here, then here, till my dad came, uh, put up a building for us in Maganjo, and we settled there for a very long time before we finally shifted to Kawanda. Yeah. How was your life when growing up or before joining school? I had a very, very tough mom, a very tough mom, so a lot of things I didn't do that people expect I should have done. I was always in, inside the compound, like these female kids that are never even sent to the shop. So everything was done by my big brother, the maids. My mother was very strict, you know, and uh, I don't want to say she was violent, but you know how the local mothers can be. It's very hard to understand that whatever they're doing is for love. In most cases, you're perceiving everything the wrong way. So she was very bitter with me. So I literally cannot say that my life was smooth. My mom was always going off with me. Yeah. So literally, the best thing I really wanted to do with my life was to leave. Actually, I, was, I could not wait to get to campus. So by senior two, I was telling her, I want to go sing. And my dad was like, can you just do senior four? I did senior four. I'm like, now, dad, could you just assist me? He paid for one project, I went to studio, did one project, then he told me, I'll shoot for you a video if you do Form 6. I went to did Form 6. At that moment, I literally thought videos were shot for like over 10 million or 20. So I was like, where am I going to get that money? I went back to Form 6. After Form 6, he was like, okay, now go try to do your life. But you can as well do three years at university. So at campus, I started hunting for where can I begin. Before and that's... That, uh, we need to know mm. Oh, I, my school started way back in Fort Potro. I went to St. Mary's Goretti, Stella Maris, that was in Fort Potro. Then we came to Kampala. In Kampala, I went to Kazo Parents, I remember. P, that is uh, P2, P3. No, P2. That was Kazo Parents. P3, I went to a school called Eda Education Center. I don't even think it still exists. So, uh, P4 to P6. I went to a lot of schools there. I went to Happy Hours. It's in Ka uh, Kawempe, where it's around there. I went to uh, I went to a lot of schools. I don't even remember some other names. Then P7, I went to Winston, Kawempe still. Did my P7, went to St. Uh, Mark's College, did one to four, then went to Brilliant High School, did uh, five to six, then went to Makerere, and then graduated there. Okay, would you relate your childhood uh life as being a stubborn person since you went to all those schools? Well, I did not change schools because I was stubborn. I changed schools because we kept moving. We kept moving from one muzigo to the other. We kept, yeah, we were missionaries. Like, my daddy was always trying to make a living back here in Kampala because he originally belonged to Fort Potro. So you know how you're trying to figure out things, a place you've not been in before. So we kept moving. So every time we changed the home, I changed the school. We changed the home, I changed the school because I had, we needed a school close to home. So it's not basically that I was stubborn, though I cannot say I was sore, sore of a good person. This music, I've, liked, I've loved it from childhood that most times all my mistakes were related to music. I escaped going to the studio, I escaped going to a club, I wanted to meet a certain artist, things like that. Those were basically my mistakes. How many are you and uh, which number are you? 
Uh, we are four and I'm the second. Yeah, we are four. Yeah, and I'm the second. What did you want to be before this thing of yours? Or what did your parents want you to be? I think my mother wanted me being a doctor. Most of local parents are thinking about doctor, lawyer, pilot, you know, the obvious. Then I, for my daddy, I don't know. All he wanted was me to have a, 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 a decent job. What did I want to be? I wanted to sing. But I also loved to do law. So I wanted to do law back at school, but then come and sing. But I ended up doing library and information science. Yeah. But I wanted to, I love law. I really, really loved law. But it looked like there's a lot of years I'm supposed to spend at school. And dingy, they, things become too wide and you're not ready. I was not ready to sit in school for another four years or five. Mm -mm. I was exhausted. When and how did you enter the music industry? Ah, uh, well... Uh, like I said, I've loved to do the music, so I've been doing it uh, a while. So when do I professionally begin? I'm at campus, that's 2019, 2018. Around March, I met Mandu through a friend, a friend of Biaxi's actually. So, because by that time, I think Mandu was working with Biaxi. So that's how I got to know Mandu. He likes, he, he noticed the talent, he's like, you can work. Then we first create a little distance until finally I give him the chance and I'm like, okay, let's try working. So we start try working. I go for training between March to November. Then November 2018, I released my first project. Uh, 2019, I released the second project. And between 2019, after two other projects, I already had two hit songs. Yeah. So by 2020, I was a confirmed artist in Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, what and who mm. inspired you to join the music industry? A lot of people. First of all, I should say I love to do the music. So the inspiration comes from a lot of artists, both in and out. You know, I, I loved uh, I loved Ray C's music. I loved Mr. Nice by then. I was a big fan of band music when I was young. So I would listen to the Stashers, the Catherines, the Nantongos. I loved their music and I was always inspired to sing. And then I don't know when I started loving the dancehall part of music and then found myself here. I think that those are daily inspirations. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of genre of uh, music are you doing? Dancehall. I do dancehall. Sometimes I fuse it with reggae, Afrobeat, blah, 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 zook, uh, lingala, but basically I am dancehall. Yeah. How is uh, Kapakati's life off stage or not in studio? Let me say you're relaxing home. Most, most of my character doesn't change from on and off stage. I am literally exactly the same person. I'm always happy, I'm always talking, I'm always interacting, I'm always trying to put a vibe or get a vibe. I'm a hyped person both on and off stage. I think I'm literally the exact same person in and out of camera. Yes, there is no big difference. At home, I'm either making noise, I'm calling people, Muliwa, come, we need to make some noise. I'm too lonely. I hate being alone, really. I don't like it. I like being visited more often by the people that do know me. Does Kamakata do chores at home? Yeah, I do. I cook, I clean, I hate washing, but sometimes once in a while if I have no option, I can't get to wash. But I don't like to wash, but I do love to cook. I do love cleaning. I think the best thing I love to do is clean, then cook. Yeah. What was your breakthrough song and what achievements have you got in the music industry? I believe my breakthrough song was Kapo Jimani, but most people say it is Sicho, and I think I should go with the variety. That's mine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but um, uh, the, I think Kapo Jimani was, because Kapo Jimani is the first song that brought me um, work. Like, people called me and they're ready to pay me to go to stage and work for them. So I believe that was my first breakthrough song. By the time I brought Sicho, it was just sealing it, proving to the people that now I'm here and I'm going to stay. Yeah. Challenges so far? Hmm. Before. I do not want to. I, I, you know, most times I even forget the challenges because I do not give challenges attention. I think the challenge, I, I should mention my challenges began when I got uh, an accident. That's when I started to realize that, okay, music can really get serious challenges. Because the other challenges were the normal challenges everyone faces, but the real one comes when I got the accident and now I have no car and I still have to make it to the shores and I have spent a lot of money in hospital and I have bills around me and things just started going back on me. Yeah, so that is what I'll call the challenge. Okay. What comes in your mind uh, the first time you all step on stage like this, you're ready to perform, the, put the uh. beat, you on stage? What comes in your mind? Every time I'm going to stage, the first thing that is in my mind, I get nervous. Every time I'm going to stage, I'm nervous. I do not know why. But 
after saying the very first word on the microphone, I'm set. I'm ready to go. I don't know where all the fear just goes, but the very first time, my, my stomach is rolling. I am feeling funny. I don't know what that is, but I think it's called being nervous. Yeah. I am not getting used to being on stage, I think, yet. But then I love to be, because after saying the very first word, are you ready, Jamuli? Any word I say? I don't know where everything goes, and I'm just ready to face everyone. Yeah. What keeps you moving in this moving uh, music industry? I think the love for what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing so much. The fact that the people who always want to help me and people that are pushing me are always there. Kati, for example, in this situation, my, my former management, my manager is, is sick right now. He has to go for an operation. And there's another team ready to take me in. I think people love me. I am loved and I really appreciate that part. Mm -hmm. okay. Your best uh, two songs from your music. <laughs> oh my god, the, now the, the biggest challenge is that I know too much of my music than the audience knows because there's a lot of music back home that is not released. But the present songs, which one? I think dance all of, usually my recent song is my favorite because I try to write better than what I wrote before. So right now it's dance solo. Two? Oh, there were supposed to be two. Which song came before dance solo? <laughs> that song that came before dance solo should be my second song. Um, your favorite Ugandan artist, too? Yeah, I have a lot that I love. I have a lot. I love Kenzo, I love Nwaji, I love, I love Shiba, I love King Saha. They're a lot. They're a lot. Uh, with Kenzo, I love the hard work. I think Kenzo always and every day proves to us that we can always make it. Everyone, anyone can make it. Nwaji, I love the fact that she is music herself. The ducks, the singing. She's music, and I love music, so I love her for that. Who else did I mention? Saha. Saha is so musical. If you do not love Saha or how he sounds, then I don't know what you should love. Yeah. How do you see the music industry at the moment? A little dull, but if we work harder, we can make it brighten up. I feel like it's dull. I feel like we, 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 we are too fake for this industry. Is, is that the right word to say? Everybody's being too fake. We are always trying to say what is going to impress the other than what is supposed to take us forward or what is really, really right. Yeah, that's what I think of it. Mm -hmm. um, why do people relate to your behavior being uh, chaotic? Because nobody likes the truth, and I think my country has been trained that we are not supposed to say the truth. So every time you say it, it's chaos. That's why they think it's chaotic. Mm -hmm. How do people around the very way you grow from take you when you go back? <laughs> Everybody's always smiling at me, so I don't know what is in their brains. I cannot open their heads. But when you smile, I think things are okay. Hmm. What do you want me to do? Focus on your sadness? I have my own problems to watch. I cannot be there focusing on this one is sad, or why are they smiling, or their smile is fake. You smile, I'm like, hey, and we proceed. Hey, it doesn't matter whether the smile is fake or true. So you love being in fake too? No, by the me, I'm real. I am so real. I'm smiling when I want to smile. I laugh when I want to laugh. I am mad when I want to be mad. I do not, I'm not controlled. Exactly what my mind is saying is exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, with the, with the kind of uh, life you're living and um, the, uh, the associates you be with, uh, do your parents help you with all what you do in the industry? I don't know. I really don't know. Honestly. I don't know. I'll, uh, uh, this time if I go there, I'll ask her, but are you happy with the people around me and the things I do? Because most times they're just supportive and, you know, they're there, but I don't know. I'll find out. I've not asked. Mm -hmm. I've not yet asked. But they never comment. Mm. They never say nothing. They're just like, hmm, Jose? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Jose. So what annoys you mostly in the music industry? What annoys you? Mm. What really does? I don't know. I don't give it attention, I think. I should say nothing. I don't feel like I should be mad at someone making a choice to do what they want for that day. There's no reason to be mad. It's their choice. So I'll say nothing. Mm -mm. Let them do them. I'm also doing me. Because if I, I say I'm a mad at this, it means that I'm also going to be mad at everything I do. So I'm not. At one time, you're going to be a mother. Yeah, I have two. Of five, actually. Six, seven. I definitely have to be a mom one day. Just not ready yet. But I will be very soon. Uh, the characters and the 
kind of uh, a man you would want. Ooh. Well, before I go to the character, I'll say I want a man that wants me. Yeah, then I think the rest we shall look. But don't be shorty. I mean, I don't want to bend, bend. Don't, don't be shorty. Because if you come when you're short, it's going to be a short-term relationship. So, I would love to, lo to, li to live the rest of my life with somebody tall, somebody that wants me. Of course, good looking. I want to want what I have. Yes. And money. <laughs> money. Anyway, money, we can see what we can do. But I want somebody that wants me. Because a, a person that wants you will do everything for you. Would you want any of your children or kids mm. replace the real you? I want my kids to be them. If any one of them wants to be like me, so be it. I do not want to dictate their lives. I think the biggest problem our African parents have, they dictate our lives all through. That's why the whites are better a little bit. Why? A white will give their kid a freedom to find out exactly what they want. But here, it's your parents' say straight until you can start to own your life. You know? I think we should give our kids the chance to make their own choices as early as possible. If your kid says, Mommy, I want white beads, why are you forcing them? No, I want you to put purple and blue and red. She wants white, it's her head, let her do that. I know you're paying, but learn to let your kids make choices or learn to let people that you dominate have their own choices. It will make, you, it will make leadership easy for you. So my kid wants to be like me, why not? They want to be like me. If they do not want, it's okay. They've seen a mistake there, they don't want to be it, it's fine. It's okay or oh, happy with her life? I am, I am happy. What makes you so comfortable with your life? Because I am being me. I face my challenges just like everybody, and I accept reality and the world. When a challenge comes, I'm like, OK, I'm facing a challenge, just like theirs will face a challenge one day. So this is not new, and we shall go through it. So I keep positive, and that makes me happy with everything that comes. There's no room to complain. Your remarks are about the I love everybody that loves me so much. Thank you for the support. I currently belong to the Untouchable and Kama Ivan Management and Arafati Badest. You need me, you contact any of the two. Thank you for the love. The music is coming. Actually, a new chapter is coming.